God cares for the church. God cares for it. <clears throat> it might be an interesting question if I were to ask you, what is the church? And how would you respond to that question as you look around you? Because the church, it, we are the church. And so if I was to say, who is the church? I would hope the response would come back saying, we are the church, the body of Christ, the hands, the feet, the eyes, the ears, we are the church. Now, when we look around us, St. Anthony's is a relatively young congregation. We're a young church. Haven't been here very long. Some of you can remember when as the Navy people say, the plank was laid. They decided to put a church in Silverdale. And a small community gathered, coming primarily from either St. Charles in Palsbo or St. Paul's in Bremerton. And it formed this little body. The first vicar was Barry Wynn. I think I would define Barry as a person who is pretty much an academic. He was somebody who really functioned out of his head. And following Barry, there was an interim who came for about a year. The interim was Max Oliphant. Max was a Baptist preacher, but his training and his expertise was in dealing with healing group dynamics. The diocese brought him in for just that reason, that he might spend time helping St. Anthony's to start to come back together and heal themselves as a body. I was the second vicar that came here. I used to say, as well as many of you know, I'm a late vocation priest. And so when I came here and the vicar appointed me as the, as the priest in charge, I was thinking, I'm not sure I even know how to spell it, much less be it. But we were together. And we walked the journey together. When I retired, Bob Bethay, who was living up in Port uh, Ludlow, came down. And he was quite a pastoral, wonderful man. He had some medical issues, but this community loved him just as much as he loved us. Following Bob, Bill came, Bill Fulton, a man who had a love and a joy of music, who later learned how to paint watercolors. He was the vicar when this building was erected. So that was part of his ministry until he retired. 
And then Craig came as the interim, here with us for about a year and a half. And then he needed to move on to other commitments. And now we're waiting. We know that someone is coming. Yes, her name is Hillary. She will be here soon. But she is the unknown quantity whom is going to come to be the leader and to move us ahead. We're going through a transition. Now, you may have noted the fact that the prayer for transition was removed from the service because we have not only a call, but an acceptance of a call and a date for when she will be here. And I told Linda, that's fine. Let's leave the prayer of transition out and think of ourselves as moving into a permanent, not a part-time. Not a transitional movement. Look ahead. Judith McDaniels will be with you this coming, this next Sunday. Then I'll come back and do another Sunday services. And then Jim Friedrich will be here. And then Hillary will be here October 8th. I hope you have it written on your calendar, in your telephone, and wherever else you keep important dates to be here to welcome Hillary as she assumes the role to lead us into whatever comes. This has been quite a period of time, the change. But then I think if we start to look at the history of what has gone on and think about the things that have taken place, it's quite remarkable. Many of you will remember how we used to do barn sales. That was an integral part of who we were. And the barn sales began because the funds that were raised helped to maintain the building. And that was the very beginning. And transitioned into part maintenance and part outreach into the community. And we did that up for several years. We also had a youth group who had a wonderful leader. Her name was Sharon Cook. She loved those kids. And we're into the time of year almost now when they would have been very busy in the barn to create the haunted barn. Remember that? Going through? This was a fundraiser for them because they could take trips and they could do things and they could be very active and they had their own money. But besides that, they this haunted barn. Remember the thrift shop? That was on the lower level of the, of the house, that building. And that was raised as outreach but it was very active. Kay McCurchew had such a commitment to it. Part of the movement of the life of this congregation has been doing in various ways. The Lord's Neighborhood Diner, the commitment that many people made to go down and to help in the feeding program, and it was one more casualty of COVID. But it was an activity that showed who we were as a people and how we got involved. People would sign up and cooking and serving and scrubbing and all the things that went with it. And we still have the witty knitters. Yeah. 
I, I can't go because I'm probably not that witty. The point was and is the reaching out and knitting caps. Janet, Marty, aren't they caps for kids? Blankets, things to provide to young children, newborns. The activity of getting together and being community, one with another, and involving it into the community beyond us. Importance of who we are. This has been just one more step in the life of this congregation and in the transition of things that we have done because at certain times people said, let's try this. Let's do this and see what it's like. Well, are you aware that I think it's once a month the Linus Project comes in and uses our building, making blankets for children, yeah. using the skills, using the, the talent that people had to create something, and we're able to provide them with a space, and after they take their products and send them out, to go to those in need mm -hmm. with the love that comes from here. Now we're moving into another transition. The ordained leadership, Hillary, <clears throat> will bring some of her gifts. She will bring herself into what we will become in the next iteration of ourself, but more importantly, she will encourage and invite each person here to think of what you can do. Come up with ideas. We wouldn't have been down at the Lord's neighbor, <coughs> excuse me, the Lord's neighborhood diner if it wasn't for the energy of people <coughs> who said this is something we can do we can get involved we can do other things we can become more than we are today by moving into it with our ideas not expecting Hillary to be the one person to say oh well we're waiting for her she'll take care of it no that's not fair. We don't put that on the shoulders of the ordained presence. They have enough that they're doing anyway. But we take our ideas and say, what can we do? Let's try this because here is a need that we can help fulfill. That's what it's going to be about. Having her here and having some new ideas and some new leadership for all of us to move ahead into what we will become. Will it be easy? Will there be any disagreements? Will anything take place that we would rather not? Sure. Because this is the church. We're the church. And I like to say, when two or three are gathered together, there's a difference of opinion. Think of the early church. Peter and Paul helping to create this infant community of worship and faith and disagreeing on our things that were basic theological understandings of who we've become. They wrestled with it. But we can look back at the gospel today. Because when Jesus was talking about when you have a disagreement, 
When you feel that you may have been injured by someone else, here is what you do. You go to them face to face, one on one. You don't triangulate anybody else into it. And you talk it out. And you come to a resolution and an understanding to heal the disagreements. And if that doesn't work, then he tells us to do the next step and the next step. There's ways to deal with conflict from problems. And Jesus was laying it out for us today. Will this happen in the future? I would only say, of course it will because we're human beings. And we will have that happening. But at the same time, I'm saying we're going into the world. Yes, we are the church. We are here together. And we're going to create and show forth the presence of God to all the world about us. Because of our ideas, our energy, and our love. And it's love that makes the difference. Amen. Amen.